Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Lenovo ThinkPad P16 Gen 1 workstation for 2023. Now, this just arrived for review purposes, and I'm excited to share it with all of you because uh, Lenovo has reimagined the ThinkPad. Uh, so that traditional ThinkPad design, uh, they've abandoned much of it and brought this to the table. This particular build that they sent over for review is only available at CDW. It retails for roughly $6,500 US dollars. I'll include a link in the description. Uh, and, you know, it is a complete beast for those of you that are wondering, as you would expect at that price point. Uh, something else you should know is that you know, this machine starts at $17.99, I believe, or it might be a little under $2,000 US dollars. So you do not need to spend $6,500 in order to get a P16, which I think is, well, frankly, smart because you should be getting what you need, uh, like anything in life, um, not just necessarily what you want. So some paperwork, going to go ahead and put that aside. Let's get this machine out of the box and I'll start telling you about specifications. So what you're about to see has a 16 inch UHD plus display for those of you that are wondering. Uh, 16 by 10 aspect ratio as I pull it out and it is a bit of a mammoth, six and a half pounds. I know you can't see it, but it's coming back, I assure you. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of the plastic right here, put it down and you can see this thing is only in part of the frame, but it doesn't look like a traditional ThinkPad. I mean, obviously the color scheme is the first thing you'll notice, um, but as we get into it, you're gonna notice even more. So let me go ahead and put the power brick box right there, get the actual packaging out of the way. And remember, when you get into mobile workstations like this that are meant to be desktop replacements for creative professionals working in you know fields like uh, architecture, 3D rendering, all of that sort of stuff. You know, you want vPro certification uh, along with other encryption, uh, and that generally means you aren't going to have the latest Intel processor. And that is true of this build as well. Uh, we've got a 12th gen i9 under the hood, specifically uh, it's the uh, 12,950HX. We've got 64 gigs of DDR5 uh, RAM. You can upgrade that up to 128 gigs. We've got NVIDIA's uh, RTX A5500. That is essentially, of course, a Quadro with 16 gigs of VRAM. So basically a 3080 Ti under the hood with studio drivers. Uh, and then a two terabyte NVMe drive comes stock, uh, but you can, of course, uh, upgrade that or add an additional drive if you so choose. I believe it maxes out at eight terabytes, this build, which I'll probably uh, be testing. And, you know, if you desire touch input with a pen, it's possible with this. You want an OLED that has touch input with a pen? That is an option. Um, this is the IPS version. Again, I've heard uh, great things about the display. We have Wi-Fi uh, 6E on board, but if you want a 5G modem in there, you can make it happen. Uh, but, you know, oddly enough, no Ethernet port on this, which is an interesting choice on Lenovo's part. But, you know, all things you need to to be aware of getting into this. So I think those of you that are interested in it know you're the customer base. Um, wall wart, our power brick right here, which appears to be a, it is a 230 watt brick, something we've seen many times before. This is not a new look from Lenovo, like uh, the new uh, gaming laptops that I've been covering uh, that now have 330 watt power bricks that are actually smaller uh, than the historical uh, 300 watt ones. But this is a pretty hulking machine. Again, six and a half uh, pounds. It is fairly thick, but it has pretty much everything you could possibly want, is what I would say, in a workstation. So uh, just going around the I.O. here, trying to get it in focus, we've got a Type-A port right there. Of course, that's USB. A Type-C port. This is not a Thunderbolt port. Headphone, uh, microphone, uh, combo jack. We move to the back of the machine, which has that uh, red piping that is uh, typical these days of uh, Lenovo's new style in their uh, workstations as well as servers, things of that nature. We have an HDMI 2.1 uh, out right there. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and then uh, the power port for that 230 watt 
uh, brick that I just uh, showed all of you. And then as we come to the right side of the machine, we have more I.O. And this is part of what I really like about this. It's also what reminds you this is a workstation, another type A port, and then a uh, SD card reader. I believe uh, that that is a high speed one. It should be. I haven't tested it, but let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, again, design and styling a stark difference from uh, the traditional P17 line that this, and you know, subplants. And the idea is, is that you still have everything that you could possibly want. So let's go ahead and slide this down. Nice big glass trackpad here. Um, we have our left and right click uh, in case you prefer to use that rather than uh, actuating the touchpad or trackpad itself. We even have our old ThinkPad pointer right there. Wouldn't be a ThinkPad without it. Speakers right here at the top of the deck. Um, keyboard. Seems like a typical uh, ThinkPad, you know, your numerical on the right side, a little off-center uh, on the trackpad. That doesn't really bother me, but I know some people take issue with it. Uh, and then, of course, you see the V Pro certification, iSafe certification, x right color calibrated, ThinkPad uh, logo, power button. I believe that also incorporates a fingerprint scanner. All of our function buttons up here at the top to really give you enhanced control uh, through single press. And um, let's go ahead and power it on. But before I do that, I'm also going to just show you this machine is capable of 180 degrees with that display. It actually seems like it could be a little bit more. It's actually going downward now. Um, and it is a matte display. Um, no wobble in this. You may have noticed that already. In fact, I don't even think I can make it wobble. Uh, 1080p webcam with a privacy shutter right there. You can see that privacy shutter. It's not a kill switch, uh, but you know, good enough for general purposes. Let me go ahead and power this on. I'm also going to, uh, and we do have juice, so that's good. And let me go ahead and reposition uh, the camera here so we can change our point of view. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a, a wide shot that hopefully gets everything into frame. Doing my best here. That should be pretty good right about there. Let's see if I can lock it in. And, you know, this is the sort of machine, I'm not going to say that dreams are made of, but you certainly could uh, bring some of your dreams to life. How about that? Because you are working with a legitimate, complete workstation. Uh, no better way of putting it than that, I guess, um, that can go anywhere. Now, when it comes to battery life, a little bit crooked here, you'll have to forgive me. I don't know exactly what we're looking at, but let's hope that we can get somewhere between five and eight hours. That's a very general number. Um, I would be more than satisfied if I could. God knows that most gaming laptops still can't pull that off. So if something like this can, it does have a very large battery. I think it's like 99 watt hours in there. Uh, so certainly a lot of juice to go around. I do not believe uh, this does support power delivery, but I do not believe you can charge over Type-C the machine itself. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. There's just not a lot of uh, information about this machine. I don't mean from Lenovo, but I mean from actual users. And I can tell you right now, the display looks gorgeous. Um, again, it's an IPS panel. Um, while I would love to see what the OLED version looks like, this is still color calibrated and per Lenovo, 100% uh, Adobe RGB, which is all I will ever need, folks. Um, it is not a high refresh panel, but again, this is not a gaming machine. Ooh, do I love this trackpad. This glass trackpad is beautiful, especially in a world where Lenovo has been... Um, I don't want to say they're not cutting corners, but they are making things more affordable. The Legion... Uh, Pro 7i, a great example. They have one of the best performing, most affordable 4080 and 4090 gaming, uh, you know, notebooks on the market. And it just happens to be that, you know, they had to make some changes uh, to the chassis to make the machine a little bit more affordable. I don't think they're, you know, game changing at all. In fact, the pricing is really what's game changing. This is kind of the opposite. You know, nothing uh, has been left off the table. This is the kitchen sink in a six and a half pound package. The only reason we're not seeing a 13th gen chip in here uh, is what I've said already, that V Pro certification. Now that likely will change. I assume there will be a refresh uh, somewhere probably in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we're not there yet. It may be first quarter of 2024. I mean, that's when essentially this machine launched, fourth quarter of 22. 
uh, and you know hit the street in the, f- the first quarter of 23. So really just a very nice machine. I'm impressed with it. Can't wait to start testing it. And uh, I'm curious you know, what all of your impressions are. Again, pricing aside, remember, you don't have to have the RTX A5500. Uh, you can, you know, get uh, an RTX uh, A series that like with four gigs of RAM and your cost is going to reflect that. You don't need uh, the highest spec, you know, CPU. You do not need to have 64 gigs of RAM. So it's a dynamic machine that I think suits a lot of different users' needs. And of course, um, it's strictly business in terms of its aesthetic, but then the fact that this can really do anything is the appealing thing to me. In fact, sort of a dream machine, if you will. As much as I like, um, you know, the, the new Legion line and think it's really uh, amazing, this is the sort of machine I think that if you can get past the weight, um, because it is, as I said, it's fairly chunky, um, it really does take performance to another level. And if we look at the bottom of the machine, you can see right here, we still have that access bay, um, which I think is great. It's one of the beautiful things about having a ThinkPad so that if you want to you know, upgrade RAM or an NVMe, you do not need to disassemble the machine. But if you want to get into uh, the secondary NVMe slot, I believe you will have to go inside. I think this only gives you access to the primary as well as, of course, the RAM. But lots of ventilation. Um, I just think it's a really nice chassis, by the way, as noted right there, aluminum magnesium combo, and you can feel it. I mean, it's just really well made. It exudes premium quality material, and that's what you expect from a ThinkPad. So I can't wait to put it through its paces, see what it's like for photo and video editing. Um, Of course, this is ideal for anyone uh, running architectural software, as I mentioned at the top of the video. So if you're running something like Revit, forget about AutoCAD, this is gonna chew it up and spit it out. I mean, this is really ready for SolidWorks, things like that, where you're doing 3D rendering, which is even more intensive. So a lot to like on paper. We're gonna find out if it delivers in the real world, but I anticipate it will. It's a ThinkPad. We ain't messing around, folks. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe, and please stay safe. Later.